What's up, wave makers? It's me, Mommy Suna. I'm freaking out. Happy to have you here. What's going on? I'm sweating. Let's just get into it today, guys. This one's a good one. It is titled Arbon, a pyramid scheme. <laughs> If you're ready to buckle in and listen to a hun tell us all about what pyramid schemes are, let's get ready, let's fucking go! But first, make sure you leave a like, and then of course, throughout the video, if you want to leave your comments, the YouTube algorithm loves video comments. Also, there's this piece of hair that I just can't, I can't. All right, let's go. Oh, before we press play. She's kind of wearing a sombrero, isn't she? I mean, it's a black one. It's not like tan like the, the Mon 8 huns, but it's pretty close. Hey y'all, what's going on? Before we get into it, first and foremost, I want to say that whoever sent you this video, whether that be me or someone else, I want you to know that this person cares about you. They care about what you're putting in and on your body. They care about your health and they care about your well-being. I mean, yeah, I guess I could say that for sure. I'm sending all of you this video because I care about you. Oh. This has nothing to do with Arbonne's dumbass products that aren't even that great. And you can definitely find dupes for all of them. Probably even better quality for cheaper, if you will. But uh, I do care about all those things. So you're welcome. So take that as a compliment that you are cared for, that you are seen, that you are loved, that you are heard, and that... This person that sent it to you wants to help you. Let's dive right in there. Arbonne. <laughs> Founded in 1975, headquarters is in Irvine, California. Vegan network marketing company focusing on health and wellness as a whole from the inside and out. There are three ways to buy products through retail, through wholesale as a preferred client, or wholesale as an independent consultant. Now, I just wanted to kind of state those simple facts just to lay a foundation. However, that is not what I'm here to talk to you about today. Yeah, well then what was the point of even bringing it up? Anyway, sorry. I'm here to talk about a really relevant comment that was just made on one of my recent posts, which I am so thankful was asked because you know what, guys? You don't know the answers unless you ask. Asking questions increases knowledge. Knowledge is power. And is this, I know the answer to this. This is a rhetorical question. Is this toxic positivity? <laughs> Yes, yes it is, it is in fact. Imagine getting a hate comment. It is not even a hate comment, it's probably just someone in anti-MLM who's just like, Arbonne's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> and she's all like, you know, I am so grateful that you asked me that, that you said that. I'm so grateful for your comment. It reminds me of that episode of Friends with, is it, is it Alec Baldwin? He was like dating Phoebe and he was just like, isn't this the greatest fight you've ever been in? Like, he's just like overly positive. Is there anything in this world more miraculous than, ooh, a picture of a dog who's is this she totally reminds me of that character in the society that we live in we are doing ourselves and others a disservice by not asking questions about the things that we don't know about about the things that we're skeptical about the things that we may not believe in the things that uh we're not on that side for whatever that may be asking questions and educating yourself especially on something that you know nothing about is important i do agree with her on this point here asking questions is important and it's important to understand the other side of things of every issue of anti-mlm and mlm you're allowed to disagree with one side but at least if you understand where they're coming from that can make you a more knowledgeable person a more empathetic person yeah Knowledge is power. Thanks for sharing that. I've never heard anyone say that before in my life. Whether that is relative to the health and wellness space and company, or whether that is to business administration, whether that is your own medical knowledge or their lack of, it's important to ask questions. And so to you who asked this question, thank you. So what's the question? Is Arbon a pyramid scheme? Let me give you my quick answer to that because I guarantee mine is a lot less biased than hers. Is Arbon a pyramid scheme? Technically, every MLM is a legal pyramid scheme. And what I mean by that is it is a pyramid scheme that uses products as a loophole to be able to remain legal. Now, just because an MLM or a pyramid scheme, I guess, has a product does not mean that they are automatically not a pyramid scheme just by having that product. We've seen Herbalife have to change their compensation plan. Advocare got fined like millions of dollars and now they are strictly just a regular business. They don't do the MLM thing at all anymore. I think there was one called like Success by health. I don't know. Honestly, like there's a lot of MLMs that get shut down for being pyramid schemes. Young Living has 
active lawsuits against it for being an illegal pyramid scheme, among many others. So basically, the answer to that question is every MLM is just a pyramid scheme that hasn't been caught yet. Or you could say every MLM is a pyramid scheme that found a loophole in the FTC's definition of a pyramid scheme through the use of products and they are holding on tight to it. She's going to sit here and try to tell you other things. <laughs> just have that in the back of your mind while you're watching her talk about what a pyramid scheme is in relation to our bond. Great question, because I was asking that same question about almost two years ago. I'm sorry, but if you have to ask if something is a pyramid scheme, it's far too close to being one. You know, it either is one or it just, it's too close to being one and you just walk the other way. And especially if you are someone who like comes into it thinking that, why would you join? Anyone who thinks this is a pyramid scheme and then ends up joining it, I call bullshit. You didn't actually ever think it was a pyramid scheme, otherwise you wouldn't have joined. The top five arguments that I had and I've heard from others that are anti-MLM or anti-network marketing. So I'm gonna be specific to Arbonne here. So one, Arbonne's a pyramid scheme. Two, Arbonne's a cult. Three, the products are overpriced and overhyped. Four, only 1% of distributors make money. Five, lastly, 99% of people lose money. For anyone that has had any of those arguments presented to them, or maybe you've even personally thought of them yourself, I just want to let you know that those are valid and that I have been on both sides of it. I've been on- Oh, the positivity is so cringe. It makes me hurt in more ways than one. Here we have another perfect example of a hun saying, I used to be just like you. I used to be anti-MLM. Like they're all saying that now. If you are ever actually, truly anti MLM, as the title says, you would have never joined an MLM. You weren't. You're just sitting here lying. You really cannot change a true anti MLMer's mind. Now, of course, we have seen examples of this in the community itself, but all of us would argue that that particular person was never anti MLM to begin with. And we know that for a fact. Sorry. It would literally be like me going to join Arbon. That just doesn't happen. It will never happen. And I just want to encourage y'all to dig deeper and not just overgeneralize and think of the what and tagline the thing. It is this, it is that. I'm encouraging everyone to look at the why and look at the how. How are these arguments getting brought up? I don't know because it literally is a pyramid scheme. Listen, I'll leave it down below. There's a really great page on the FTC's website that goes through, here's signs of something being a pyramid scheme. And like literally everything can be said to be true about any MLM that you apply it to. Again, the loophole is the products. It is an actual loophole. Why are these arguments getting brought up all the time? And I think that's kind of the thing that we're missing. We're missing the how and the why. Was it a lack of effort? Was it a lack of commitment? What it, was it a lack of skills? It's literally none of that. Lack of commitment, lack of skills, all that shit is not why people call it a pyramid scheme. See, this is assuming that you have a story to begin with, that you had an MLM experience to begin with when that's not true. A lot of people in the anti-MLM community have never been in an MLM or even like personally known anyone close to them who's been in an MLM. So her argument here is suggesting that that is true. And it's like, no. Oh, you only think it's a pyramid pyramid scheme because you weren't successful. No. No, we think it's a pyramid scheme because the FTC literally describes it as one. It's really not that hard to understand. It is not that hard of a concept to grasp. Was it a lack of goals? Was it a lack of your own personal network? Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme because you didn't have enough friends on Facebook. What? What is this argument? Bitch, it makes no fucking sense. And these are the important questions that we're forgetting to ask especially when we see this success story or that failure story. We're just so quick to tagline or label it as this, as X. She, she started it like this, like this. And then her next one was like, uh, I mean like this, not, not like this, like this. I'm correcting myself. She edited this video. She couldn't have just edited that part, like shit. And to be completely honest, I think the reason why we do this is because it's the easy way out. Instead of taking the time to research, to read, to educate ourselves, it's easier to label it and move on. And that's not fair. That's not fair to you. It's not fair to another human that you're speaking with. 
it's not fair to society. You know what else is not fair to society? Fucking using people to get ahead. <laughs> like literally getting rich off of other people's money. That's not very fair either. And that's pretty much what you're doing. It's not fair to brainwash somebody, to love bomb somebody into joining your business and giving you money and then to just kind of leave them high and dry when they realize it's not what it was all presented to them as in the first place. That's not fair. You want to talk about what's not fair? I can think of a lot of things in regards to your fucking pyramid scheme that aren't fair. But no, oh, it's not fair to call it a pyramid scheme. Sure it is because it pretty much is. I do want to just set a standard for what Arbonne says about pyramid schemes. You can find this on their website. So not only do they state that they're against- Guys, guys, wh who, why would you take anything that Arbonne says? They are definitely not the expert on the topic. They're the ones who are trying to twist it into working out for them. They have a motive to try to separate the two. So how about listen to literally anyone but Arbonne? How about that? But they also stand against any form of scam that could potentially mislead consumers. Well, of course they're gonna say that, but you know, what's funny is that like yeah most of everyone else in the world is against scams too you don't have to come out and say that it's like generally yeah they're against scams we all kind of agree collectively that scams are bad right so why do you have to make that distinction if you are not a pyramid scheme then why do you have to specifically come out and be like oh we don't stand for that no no seems a little odd so not only that but they also state that they are advocates huge advocates kids for greater clarity and federal law to literally help consumers steer clear from pyramid schemes. No, they, <laughs> they just want you to join Arbonne instead of their competition. That's what that is. They're like, no, 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 Arbonne, no, we're different. Don't join Monet, join Arbonne because Monet's the pyramid scheme. We're, we're not, you can join Arbonne. We've been around for 40 years. If we were a pyramid scheme, we would've been shut down by now. Oh my God. How many times have we heard shit like that? No, Arbonne, they just want to make sure that you're giving your money to them instead of any other pyramid pyramid scheme. It's so obvious. All right, so debunking number uno, Arbonne is a pyramid scheme. So if you go to the Federal Trade Commission's website, uh, Protecting America's Consumers, and you review FTC's definition of products versus headcount for money information, you will logistically see that Arbonne is not a pyramid scheme. It's funny that she is literally citing the FTC's website when I can cite the FTC's website right now. Again, I'll leave it down below. I have videos about it. I think I have a full on video about it. Like what's an MLM versus a pyramid scheme? It's an older one of my videos, but either way, I mean, I've talked about it plenty of times. Even in one of my recent videos, I think we went through it again. Yeah, it's funny that she uses the FTC to try to say that Arbonne is not a pyramid scheme when everything on their website points to Arbonne over there is a pyramid scheme and you should stay away. Short and sweet, simple. Debunking number two. She thinks she debunked that Arbonne is a pyramid scheme by quoting the FTC, which is exactly where I'm going to send you to see that Arbonne is in fact a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Shit, man. All right. Arbonne is a cult. So I would like you to ask yourself what people, products, or company are you a super huge fan of that you spend your time and your money on, whether that is Urban Outfitters or coffee or Lululemon or even college whatever that is. Now, could someone negatively categorize that and your love for that thing as a cult because of their own anti whatever, because of the predisposition they already have because of that thing. Now, a predisposition is something that you immediately from the get go, you discount it because you feel it doesn't fit in your lifestyle. That's not what a predisposition means. Oh my God. That has nothing to do with, uh, it doesn't fit in with your lifestyle. She took the definition of it and then twisted it to form her narrative. And it's like, but that, that's not, no. Uh, a predisposition is when something doesn't fit your lifestyle. No, what the fuck? We're going by Merriam-Webster dictionaries definition of cult? Wait a minute. <laughs> if we're going by a definition of a word in general, she certainly should have checked the dictionary for the word predisposition first before she went and used it. So let's see what she has to say. You could be considered in a cult, a coffee cult, Lululemon cult, an athlete cult, a college cult, a yoga cult, a vegan cult, a pescatarian cult, 
a, a hiker cold, whatever it is. So instead of her debunking that Arbon is a cult, her argument was, we're all in cult. Do you like coffee? You're in a coffee cult. Do you like hiking? You're in a hiking cult. Do you go to college? You're in a college cult. No. First of all, you didn't debunk anything. You literally just like played into the whole, yep, we are a cult, but so is coffee. Fucking no, it's not. <laughs> Genetically Modified Skeptic has a great video about MLMs and cults comparing the bite model to multi-level marketing companies, which the bite model is a great tool in determining whether something is a actual cult or not. So when you compare MLMs to the bite model, there are a lot of similarities. If you compare somebody who likes coffee to the bite model, you're not gonna see a lot of similarities. I mean, come on. She seems to be all about sources if she wants to throw the FTC's website at us. But how about you source the bite model? Oh, you won't because it doesn't play into your narrative? Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't play into your lifestyle. You have a predisposition. Oh my god. We're going by the definition, that's what it is. However, a, like the word cold, the term cold has always had a negative connotation to it. And so, and it still does. Just think about the predispositions that you have in your life that you're discounting because you feel it just contradicts the way that you live. Again, that is not the definition of predisposition, ma'am. Debunking number three overpriced and overhyped. Y'all, I'll keep this short and simple and sweet. Review the product descriptions, review the ingredient policy, look at FDA compliance, look at the benefits, look at the uses, look at the return policy. Y'all, do your own research, not just on Arbonne products, do your own research with other brands, compare, contrast. Guys, this takes so much discernment. It does take effort, it does take time. And instead of using the rest of the time of this video to describe- Okay, hold on, wait, I'm obviously gonna talk about that there. She didn't really debunk that either. Instead of being like, we're not overpriced because you're paying for the quality. Instead of that, she just said, do your research and look at the policy. Look at the return policy. It's like, no, if you're doing like actual research, like good research, you will see that MLMs are overpriced and overhyped, of course, because, well, let's say they're overhyped because the people selling it obviously they have an incentive to hype those products up because they're going to make money off of hyping the products up as with any good advertiser the difference there is that lots of companies advertise their shit but they pay the people who are doing the advertising for them to advertise for them in mlms the people at the bottom are all kind of the ones doing the word of mouth thing and they ain't getting paid shit so there's that difference there. I don't know about Arbon's return policy in specifics. I know like, I mean, Monate, for example, you have to pay to ship it back and it's only within the first 30 days or something like that. So I don't know if Arbon has something similar like that. I've never really looked, but it's entirely possible that the return policy and the return rates, I guess, maybe they're low in Arbon for the same reasons they're low in Monate. Not because people love the products and they want to keep them, more so because it costs money to return them. I don't know that for sure. And I I don't really care to look it up. The real reason, one of the big reasons why MLM products are so overpriced, they'll always say it's because you're paying for quality, but every single MLM, I guarantee you can find a dupe for that product that is just as good, if not better, and it costs less. And you know why? Because the MLM business model has to somehow pay all these crazy commission amounts because look at it this way. If you sell a product and you're an Arbon, I don't know what it is. Like, let's just say 30%. You make 30% off of your commission. Okay, so that's already, there's that 30% markup there. But then also the uplines are getting percentages of it too, of that sale. So like maybe your upline's getting 10% and then that upline's getting 5% and then that upline's getting 3%. And then, you know, it go, I don't know the exact numbers. Okay, don't quote me on it. Every MLM is different in that regard. But you have to be able to pay these insane commission amounts to the people selling the products and then their uplines. Not to mention all the bonuses, the team building bonuses and all that other shit that they always have, the car bonuses and the matching bonuses and all these other things. There's so many bonuses. And then Arbonne as a company also has to make a profit. They got to pay their CEOs and their, I'm sorry, their real CEOs. That's why their products are so expensive. Come on. It's not because they're really just that good. You can find dupes to Arbonne's products that are just as good and cheaper to you our bonds amazing ingredient policy i just want to keep it short by saying the fda only bans 11 toxic ingredients from all of our products 
the EU bans around 1,400, and Arbonne bans over 2,000. Okay, so here's what I know about the EU ingredient things, is they ban stuff like jet fuel. <laughs> The U.S. is just basically like, we're not even gonna include that on the list of things we ban because, uh, duh! Europe, the U.K. is over here like, uh, yeah, you can't put jet fuel in your face creams, just so you know. Like, they make it a very specific, like, you can't put that in there. It's like, most people would be like, we know. Obviously, there's probably some things that are legal in the United States that probably shouldn't be in our stuff. I'm not denying that. But to quote, oh, the, Europe bans so many more ingredients than we do. It's like, yeah, because they're banning, like, really obvious shit. And it's probably the same with Arbon. Like, I've never even heard anyone say Arbon bans over 2,000 ingredients from their products. It's like, okay. So the next time you're putting that stuff on your skin, the next time that you're using your C4, you're drinking that bang, you're drinking that monster, just remember that the FDA only bans 11 ingredients. No wonder we live in a health and wellness industry that is worth $4.2 trillion. You can make and sell anything dang near. I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you have any other additional questions regarding our bond ingredient policy. Listen, let me put it this way. If someone were to put jet fuel or like cat piss in a wellness product, it would not be on the shelf for very long. It's just obvious. I'm sure there's laws somewhere else that say you can't put cat piss in a moisturizer. It would fall somewhere in some kind of legislation somewhere. I don't know where to look for it, but I hope you understand my point. Reach out to the person that sent you this video. Reach out to me if you have food allergies Allergies, holla at your girl because so do I. Debunking number four. One percent of distributors make money. Y'all, review the compensation plan, review the income disclosure statement. All earnings can be found at earnings.arbon.com. Let's do that. In 2020, Arbon paid in excess of 385 million in preferred client commissions. Oh, I hate seeing uh, income disclosure statements like this because it's so misleading because it really, it, it doesn't give you all the information you need. Who is included in this? Does this include the people who made zero dollars? You know, the average annual earnings is $206 by the bottom 56% of the company. Median annual earnings is $108, which means I guess like the median you could say would be less than $10 a month, which I'm not about to like do a deep dive into Arbonne right now. I don't know for sure, but there probably is some kind of monthly minimum they have to make in order to be active, in order to get commissions from their downlines. And I would guarantee that it's gonna cost you more than 10 bucks a month to keep that up. So yeah, while the chart here in front of us says the bottom 50% average makes $1 a month. So that's not a loss. It's like, yeah, but how much are they spending to make that $1 a month? They are, sp that would put them in the negative. See, she's not admitting that. What I will say is that, yeah, it kind of drives me crazy to hear people be like 99% of people will lose money because that's not the statistic. I think the statistic comes from like a 1997 something. And I think the statistic there was 99% of people will not make money or they will lose money. But also AARP did a study much more recently. I think it was like 2018 maybe. And the number there is more like about 75% of people who will either break even or will lose money. But the other 25% of people who make money, most of them could be literally netting like $1 and they would obviously still fall into the they made money. It's very misleading what she's saying here. She, like every other hun ever, will leave out the fact that yeah, if you have a downline and you want your commissions from your downline, you have to meet this minimum amount of product sold or product bought. And not to mention, you gotta be a product of the product. With Arbonne in particular, they have so many products that eventually you're going to have to switch out. You're gonna have to change what you're using in your life. Shampoo, conditioner, makeup, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Arbonne makes all that stuff. So okay, you've been using Tresemme for your whole life, but now you better switch to Arbonne because if you wanna sell the product, if you want people to buy that product from you, you need to use it yourself. And that goes for literally everything Arbon sells. No more Red Bull for you, no more Monster for you, you're drinking fizz sticks now. And that's something you're gonna be purchasing over and over and over again. And the only reason most of those people use it is not because they like it more than Red Bull, because I have tried the fizz sticks and they're really not that great. No, the reason that people push them so hard is because they have an incentive because they will make money from it. I really doubt that anyone goes into drinking fizz sticks on a regular basis because they like it more than the energy drink they were drinking before. Just from my personal experience, I don't think any of that would be true. We can continue here. You guys get what I'm trying to say. She's being very misleading. And also y'all like understand the financial success stories. 
ask yourself like why ask yourself okay review skills goals efforts quality of network quantity of network think about these things it's literally all about just taking the time to research and educate yourself before signing up for anything. That's true, but if anyone was actually educating themselves before signing up for an MLM using good sources, uh, non-biased sources even, yeah, they wouldn't end up joining. But if your research is talking to the person who's trying to recruit you, or talking to other people in the company, of course they're gonna talk it up and be like, oh, don't listen to them. It depends on the quality of the research you're doing. All right, last but not least, debunking number five. 99% of distributors believe money. Yeah, again, like we were just saying before, I don't believe that that statistic is true just based on, mostly based on the AARP study. I think most of the people who are making money in MLMs probably just make barely enough to be able to cover the cost of them buying the MLM product. Because like if you're spending like 300 bucks a month on fizz sticks and protein powder and beauty products or whatever the fuck, 300 is low for Arbonne because their shit is, oh, well, I don't know, overpriced and overhyped. That 300 hundred dollars you made or I don't know 400 bucks you made last month you went and you spent 300 of it buying all that other shit so it's like it's just not sustainable reliable income let's compare that statement with that of a corporate position oh no when you also add in your college debt you add in the payback period. You should join an MLM because college debt. A lot of people don't need college anymore. Like college is becoming so obsolete. And so, I mean, obviously if you want to have a healthcare career or something like, I don't know, important like that. Not to say that your job without a degree is not important. Of course, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like there are plenty of careers that people can get into without having any sort of college education. So to suggest that someone might have student debt and then to apply that to be like, well, your income, you're losing money because you spent a hundred thousand dollars on your education that's a straw man but from the get-go you also have to add in like if you get accepted into that college and then you have to balance that with the chance that you will receive a corporate position a nine to five position a cubicle position yeah but a lot of colleges help you find those positions i mean yeah some colleges will just throw you out to the wolves and be like good luck but i mean i'd say a good amount of colleges these days have some kind of job placement programs if not like counselors or people who have some kind of connection that can help you get hired with your degree she's making it sound like it's like a gamble it's like a chance like no if you have a degree you're probably probably going to be able to find something somewhere with your degree. So that means we're going to have to look at franchises plus your buy-in cost. No! Oh my god. <laughs> Stupid. If you by chance don't get a nine to five position at a corporate job, your only other option is franchise. No, it's not. Oh my god. And even then, being a franchise owner is owning a small business. Even though you didn't come up with McDonald's, you, you're not the owner of McDonald's, but you own that location you are paying your employees, you are running shit, you're hiring people, you're you're doing much more real estate, you know, like all that shit. And they don't do that in most MLMs. She's literally sitting here comparing a franchise owner to someone who's in an MLM. And that's not fair. That's not a fair comparison to make at all. Franchise owners do so much more than just buying a hundred dollar starter kit and posting on Facebook. <laughs> or your startup costs and the, the repayback period for those things, if you qualify. So how long would it take to repay back the 100K loan that you took out for the startup chain for a building for the next Qdoba, right? That's if you qualify, if you have enough money in your bank account or you meet their criteria. Okay, so Arbonne doesn't have any of that. What's your point? <laughs> There's, yeah, literally anyone can throw down a hundred bucks or whatever it is to join Arbonne. That's not a job that I want to have. If literally anybody gets hired, like there's not much bragging you can do about that. At least franchise owners like have to actually have like real world skills and you have to be able to manage money and inventory and pay people and hiring people and all that shit like she's doing a disservice to franchise owners all over the country right now and if you don't want to okay well why are we sitting here uh, demonizing MLMs and the 99% who lose money but we are refusing to bring up franchises and we are refusing to bring up the college to corporate 
position. Oh, I don't know. Those people at least make minimum wage and like a franchise owner probably is going to come out of it with more than a min minimum wage for themselves. They're a fucking business owner of a franchise of a well-trusted company. Like no one trusts MLS. <laughs> Maybe like Tupperware or some shit, <laughs> like, you know, cause that's kind of a household name at this point. But for the most part, no one's looking at Arbonne and like saying, that's a trusted company, just like Jack in the Box, like, <laughs> you know? No one's doing that. He's comparing apples to oranges. They're two totally separate things. If 99% of people in every single industry lost money, none of us would have anything. <laughs> and that's just simply not how it works. Again, apples to oranges, it, just, it makes no fucking sense. Now, are we just demonizing a certain industry yes. or a certain company? Yes, we are. I mean, like, at least just be honest about it. I am. Like, call a spade a spade, call for what it is. Let's now chat about uh, small businesses and startup costs. So I'm talking angel investors, I'm talking venture capitalists, I'm chatting funding, um, also that repayback period. If you raise enough money or you don't run out of it first, it's called undercapitalization. This is kind of like she's using fear tactics to convince people not to do anything except for join an MLM because the MLM is the only way to go. You're gonna come into all of these same exact issues with every other business. It's like, no, you're not. Yeah, I mean, everything's gonna have its own challenges here and there and things are gonna be different with the franchise than if you're working for fucking Jack in the Box. Like, y you know, it's gonna be different. Of course it's gonna be different. None of us are denying that. I don't understand. How do you not see the difference? Oh, I know what it is is brainwashing oops my bad oh cults also she she seems to know the webster's dictionary definition of a cult so if she is so well versed in that then she should be able to answer all these questions herself when small businesses tank because they run out of all of their money yes it baffles me when franchises small businesses the college to corporate debt is not in the conversation because it's a straw man it's not the same that's why it's not in the conversation i mean come on it's so obvious when you're this brainwashed by your oh that's right your cult your cult of arbon when your cult of arbon <laughs> brainwashes you to this capacity where you literally have to sit and go i don't understand i'm baffled i don't get it it's so obvious but you're brainwashed <laughs> oh my god this woman so if that last reason is going to be your only deterrent for not pursuing an opportunity that can benefit you from the inside out, then I'm letting you know like right now that there is way more to this conversation of, oh, the 99% loses money. Let's look at the statistics for college to corporate, for franchises, for startups, for small businesses, y'all. This is relative to the world we live in. It's really not. Again, if 99% of people or even 75% of people, just like the AARP study says, if 75% of people, regardless of your education or wherever the fuck you're working, your work experience, if all of those people only had a 75% chance of making profit, can you imagine the world we would live in? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that wrong? 25% of people. It's not in the conversation for good reason because it doesn't make any sense to have the conversation about it in relation to MLMs. They are not functionally the same. They are not relative to each other. They're just not. This isn't new news. This is the working world. This is what happens. And clearly, those statistics of loss aren't exactly deterring people from going and getting those jobs. Because they're at least making minimum wage to pay back their student debt or whatever the fuck. It's so fucking obvious. And so if this is in the conversation, then... Again, let's just be honest about it. If you're just against an industry or against a company, call it for what it is. Okay, I am. So, conclusions. <laughs> According to FTC definition of information, Arbonne is not a pyramid scheme. However, it can be interpreted that way without the proper education. Please tell me what the proper education is then, because I mean, I think I have some pretty good reading comprehension. I also think that most of the anti-MLM community does too. We can interpret things pretty well. We can comprehend the things we're reading pretty well. It seems like when one person is the problem, or when one person has one thing to say about something and the rest of us have another thing to say, I would say that maybe you're the problem. You see what I'm saying? I think you're the one who's not understanding the actual definition of a pyramid scheme and why companies like Herbalife and Advocare, why they still get brought down for being pyramid schemes when they literally share the exact same compensation plan as you. So how could that interpretation have been formed? Well, maybe you had a bad experience with oh, a person here in the company. We go. And if you have, I'm so sorry because that's not what Arbonne is about. 
Or maybe you had unrealistic expectations of the time and effort and skills that it would take to grow a small business. Well, whose fault is that? It's almost like when you sell something as, look at the yacht I got to ride on last weekend. Look at this trip to the Bahamas I took and then last week I was in Vegas and oh, here's my bank account. Look at all these six figures, seven figures, fuck or whatever. It's almost like when you sell the opportunity that way, people have an expectation set for them. It's almost like when you sit here and you try to say that every business in the world is the same and has the same loss statistics as MLMs, it almost seems like you're going to go into it expecting to be able to make a living. And then when you don't, and you're not allowed to act surprised. It's like, oh, well, you're the one who set the expectation. And she's doing that with this video. The irony is clearly lost on this woman, but it ain't lost on me. Or if you've already discounted the opposing perspectives or if you already had an anti-MLM disposition, or if you lack the discernment in the appropriate choice of product person to start with in the company. So if you have had any of these things happen to you, if you've had these interpretations, these assumptions, these arguments, if you're anti-MLM, whatever that is, I just wanna say that it will be incredibly easy to claim any network marketing company as a scam. So you admit that. She's almost self-aware. Like she's almost there. She is inching towards self-awareness, but no. Oh no, she can't do that because, <laughs> because she's predispositioned to sell Arvon because it fits her lifestyle, right? Oh my God. So I just want you to reflect, uh, to research, to reach out, to ask those questions because knowledge is power. Education is important. And for those of you who know me, uh, I'm no dum dum. I'm not stupid. Like I'm an intelligent woman and I research and I read and I ask the tough questions. I have the hard conversations and that is important. And so whether that be for Arvon or whatever that else is in your life, y'all, do your research. She obviously is very well spoken and she has intelligence going around in her head. You can tell, but she's either one of two things. She's either brainwashed into thinking that everything she's saying is correct or, and this is probably the more likely scenario, she knows what she's saying is just manipulation, but she's gonna keep saying it because she's making money off of it. It's one of the two. No one is this high up in an MLM and that clueless about what they're doing with their lives. Like she knows. And though my why behind Arbonne has so many different layers, the top layered, like the umbrella why for everything is the Lord. I know that God calls us and guides us in leading a life with a servant's heart. And that is my why behind this. And so I just want to take a moment to um, pray over uh, those that are watching this, those that will watch it, um, and those that may even like, skip over this. So Make dear Heavenly Father, stop, God, thank you no. for this beautiful Monday. God, uh, I pray that you bless not only my week, but those and, and the person that is watching this right now, Lord, uh, bless their week, bless their life. God, we thank you for the, bre for the breath in our lungs, uh, for the ability to move around in whatever manner that you have called us to do so, God. Uh, I pray that those watching uh, can lead and continue to lead with love uh, with a servant's heart. God, I pray for uh, open hearts and open minds while watching this video. Lord, I pray that any dispositions that they may have, not only in accordance to this wonderful company, but Lord, uh, for anything else in their life that they make uh, assumptions over, God, I pray that we can just take those assumptions, we can throw them in the trash. God, I ask for patience, I ask for understanding. Lord, I uh, just want to pray the biggest blessing um, over the, the minds and hearts of those that are watching this, Lord, that uh, they will be open-minded, that they will ask the tough questions, that they will engage in conversations that will uh, produce great knowledge and great education, Lord. Um, Lord, I just ask that you uh, guide our steps, that you guide our life in love, uh, that, that we can all learn more and more each day how to lead in love, uh, how to walk in love, how to accept grace, how to extend grace, God, um, and that we can continue to work to the best versions of ourselves in your name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God bless whoever is watching this. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. Oh, my God. That was an ending. That, oh, okay. So now she is... <laughs> 
That was strange, y'all. I think that's the first time we've ever actually had a hun stop and say a prayer. You want to talk about manipulation? There's some religious manipulation going on there. Wow. Wow. I'm speechless. The ending of that? I'm fucking speechless. Hey, Brenda, I'm sorry. Eat a dick. She looks fucked up right now. I don't know. I think I said enough here. So um, now it's time for you guys to uh, say some things. Go ahead and leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. My mind is, uh, it's, it's poo poo. It's pee pee poo poo. But anyway, I guess it's time to thank my patrons and my members. You guys, these are my financial supporters. They get access to our private Discord server. Often you get access to early videos, merch deals, you know, things like that. Lots of fun stuff. So if that all sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie or you can click the join button beneath this video to support me financially. And of course, obviously, I appreciate it so, so, so much. The biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Amanda Shannon, Elizabeth Wyatt, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Meredith Nakata, Molly Wasilewski, Quinlan E, Ryan Mew, Turd Ferguson, Alice W, April Lindblom, Boris Geller, Katrina Rosemarick, Claire T, Danae Twitchell, Daniel Urena, E. Higgins, Erica Lautercratic, Jerry Duncan, Heidi Ha, Julia Wheeler, Kelly Crefield, Kim Cartwright, Lizzie McQueen, Maddie Darley, Rachel McHenry, Samantha Jackson, Stephanie Hell, Tuesday the 13th, Jay Marie, Lizzie Lyon, Tiffany Brust, Auntie Lou, Vamp Faye, Fallon Lowry, Sabrina Franklin, and Julia Niebrodowski, and to the rest of my fabulous patrons and my members, thank you so much for being here and for being you, and even if you're not a financial supporter of mine, thanks for making it to the end of this video, because the algorithm loves that, so there's that. Keep making waves, babes. I'll smell you guys later. Mommy Tsunami, out.